Hello, friends. Uh, good afternoon. I'm State Senator Rob Sampson, and I'm coming to you this afternoon from uh, the back deck of my home in Wolcott. And today I wanted to talk to you about negative campaigning. I want to start by saying for the record that I have never engaged in negative campaign ads. I don't do dirty campaigning. I just don't believe in it. I've always taken my role as a state representative and now a state senator uh, very seriously. Uh, to me, that means I am a representative of my neighbors. And that means the people that voted for me and the people that did not. It also means that you know when you compete for people's votes, the way you do that is by being fair and expressing your own positions, ideas, and telling people what exactly you would do if you were elected. And also being honest about what your opponent's record and principles and values are too. I don't see a reason to distort what my opponent believes in or what his positions are. I am confident that people, if they knew the truth about both of us, they're going to choose me every time. So that's why uh, I don't see any reason to negative campaign. Um, I'll also say that I, as an incumbent, of course, I have a record. And it's a record that I'm very proud of. And I believe that that should be the greatest indicator of what I believe in and what people ought to expect from me. I run as a Republican. Uh, some people might call me a conservative. Others sometimes say I'm a libertarian. Some people might even call me a classic liberal. In some ways, these things all mean more or less the same thing, uh, depending on who you talk to. And for other people, they might mean totally different things. And that's very frustrating and, and one of the ways politics um, it gets hard for people to really track uh, who agrees with them on, on their view of the world. The way to understand my political philosophy is pretty simple, which is that I believe in the American system of government, uh, that our country was founded on the principle that people are inherently free, they are born free, and that uh, we have limited government. We have government only because it's necessary uh, to provide for our common defense and to maintain public safety and the rule of law. Uh, and that the government should be primarily focused on protecting our individual rights as citizens. Our Declaration of Independence sets down on paper our mission state statement as a country, which is that we are all equal under the rule of law and that each of us has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, when I was a kid, I thought the pursuit of happiness statement in our Declaration was, was kind of a corny thing. But as I grew older, I realized it's not corny at all. Uh, there's no more important aspect of uh, morality and the creation of a system of government than to say that people get to choose um, who they are, what they believe, and how they want to live. Um, that's what makes a lot of the negative attacks that come my way so very frustrating. Uh, I've been accused of all sorts of things, uh, most recently being against the LGBTQ community. Uh, if you follow me, you know that's impossible. Um, furthermore, it doesn't even matter whether I agree with a particular lifestyle or not. My values are that I defend others' freedoms, whether I agree with them or not. I, to me, that's an essential part of being an American, is that you understand that your neighbor can believe what they want to, they can live their life the way they want to, and that you can respectfully disagree with them, and you can still go about your life and even be friendly with them, respecting the idea that we're all individuals and that we're free. And uh, I really wish people valued that freedom and the respect for other people's freedom more. Um, I have some notes I'm looking at here. So um, the Declaration of Independence is indeed a beautiful document, and I would say that's the reason why I got involved in politics. Uh, like many of you, I'm really afraid of losing the values that our country was founded on, and I want to see them pres preserved. Um, as I said, to me, this is um, the only way to create a moral society, to base it on freedom and opportunity. America is, in fact, proof of just how great those ideas are. Uh, our individually protected rights, uh, along with free market capitalism, have created the most prosperous time in the history of mankind. And the battle between the political parties is really a battle between those that want to preserve this moral system of freedom and opportunity and those that want to replace it with a more authoritarian uh, force 
where the government has more power and can limit our freedoms and, in fact, tell us how to live. And I understand that there are certain people, the Democratic Party, that believes that that is a superior system. Um, and I think that's in large part because they don't trust individual freedom. They think it's scary in some way and that it's better to have um, experts or government bureaucrats that make decisions for us to tell us what's safe, you know, whether or not you should eat certain foods or what you should set your thermostat on in your house or whether you should wear a mask and, and so forth. Um, there's a, de a delicate balance between what is providing for public safety and what is infringing on freedoms, and that's the push and pull and tug of politics. Um, I will never agree with the idea that the government should tell us how to live, though. And I think that the government already takes too many of our liberties away and, and our choices on, on how we uh, choose. And just in the form of taxes, the idea that more than half of our income is taken away in taxes to me is more of a burden than should be placed on individual citizens and that people should have their own choice on how to spend their money and what to do with it. All right, so I said I was going to talk about negative campaigning, so I should get to it. Um, there's a number of ways that the majority party creates a false impression about members of the minority. Take the state budget, for example. Um, historically, the state budget is a party line vote. Uh, so this creates a situation where the majority party now has a gimme. You know, they know that they're going to pass a budget and that every Republican is likely to vote no. So they can put anything they want in that budget, and now they have a record of Republicans voting against it. And I, I can remember one year, I don't remember exactly when it was, but it was early on when I was in the House where they added a line in the state budget for breast cancer research. So now they had a ready-made campaign mailer, you know, to send out at election time. Oh, every Republican voted against uh, campaign or breast cancer research. And of course, none of us voted against breast cancer research. We voted against the state budget because it was, you know, out of control spending and taxes and irresponsible in a lot of ways and bailing out Hartford and spending money on the Excel Center. And, you know, so you put one line item in there about breast cancer research and now that's a tactic that is used very, very often. And it's not just on the budget. There are many, many bills that um, have lots and lots of pages and lots and lots of parts. And often, when you're looking out uh, at bills, um, they often have some element of good and some element of bad. And you're doing your best to try and navigate, well, how good is the good and how bad is the bad? A good rule of thumb to ask yourself if you're trying to make a decision about whether or not you agree with a particular candidate is just ask yourself if it makes any sense. You know, they will tell you Rob Sampson voted against women. Uh, Rob Sampson voted against cheaper insulin prices. Ask yourself if those things even make sense. Do you think anyone would run for office, get elected, serve in the legislature, and go and pass laws and vote for things that would make them unpopular? Or, you know, set them up to <laughs> be portrayed as a bigot in some way. Uh, those are ridiculous claims. And, uh, you know, I've already responded to the insulin one, and in the last 2018 cycle, we had a women's health bill, which, you know, I went into great detail about what was good and what was bad about it. It was essentially, a, you know, Obamacare uh, replacement uh, for the state of Connecticut in case, uh, you know, federal Republicans uh, undid Obamacare. Uh, to characterize it as a women's health bill is dishonest, and, uh, but of course, it's just a political tactic. Um, I don't want to get too sidetracked because I'm trying to talk about how uh, the, these things on a global scale instead of individual ones. But I do want to point out that I've already refuted those two items. Uh, you can look up uh, what I've had to say about them. Um, there should not be bills for any group of people. There should not be bills for women. There should not be bills for men. There should not be bills for the LGBT community. There not, should not be bills for people that live in a certain town or work for a certain company. These are dangerous policies. Uh, and I believe uh, those policies are exactly what's bankrupting our state. And it's also dividing and ruining our country. Um, but unfortunately, the left has been using these identity politics uh, tactics more and more every year. You know, imagine a bill that says that women get more health protections men, than men or that we are going to give special tax credits to some large manufacturing company. These things have already happened. Um, but think about the impact of that. First off, nothing is free. If you benefit one group, it necessarily must diminish another. Uh, corporate welfare uh, is an example of this. It requires every other business to pay more taxes for the benefit you give to one. 
Uh, it also creates lots of corruption and favor trading uh, among politicians and, and big business. Um, these policies are dangerous. Uh, they pick winners and losers, and they are in direct conflict with the beautiful, foundational, moral principle of freedom and equality that is America. And um, worse, it gives politicians more power, which is the exact opposite. We want people to have power. And when politicians can make laws that benefit one group of people at the expense of another, you only can have a bad result. And of course they do it more and more all the time. Uh, not only do they get to buy favor with the special interests that they benefit, but they also get to punish people that don't vote for them or disagree with them. And it's also handy to be able to send out a piece of mail that say Rob Sampson you know, voted against women, uh, when the truth is that I would only vote for a bill that, that applies the law equally to every person. Um, speaking of which, uh, there is no vote that I have ever taken that I, has been more maligned or misconstrued, taken out of context, than my vote on what is uh, House Bill 6695 from 2017. This is the so-called ban on conversion therapy. Uh, it was described as, you know, uh, a ban on electroshocking gay kids. Uh, but those words don't appear in the bill. I mean, torture is already illegal. This bill essentially was an extremely broad uh, description of saying you cannot um, interfere uh, in any way with um, a minor child's choice of a relationship. And I just think that's beyond the realm of the government uh, and should be left uh, to parents. Worse is that they ultimately modified this bill and uh, made it so that it only creates a ban in the cases where mon money changes hands, effectively making it so it's actually okay to have conversion therapy as long as it's done for free, which I voted against. So what's ironic about this bill is as much as the um, Southington Democrats, who are very progressive, uh, and want to go after me for this bill, they don't even realize that my votes were correct and that the bill actually makes the situation far worse uh, uh, for the LGBT community than better uh, because it essentially creates a place where conversion therapy can happen where it did not before. Um, this is what they do. They take a controversial issue, they create a bill that has a misleading title, and then they fill it with contradictions and reasons for their political enemies to vote in a way that, that they can then attack them for. Um, what's worse is that they have become so adept and effective at using this tactic that many of my Republican colleagues routinely vote with the Democrats on these terrible bills rather than face the wrath of angry constituents who are voting or uh, just believing the talking points or what the title says. Um, the conversion therapy bill does not do what they say it does. Um, I'm proud of my vote on it. It represents a thoughtful position on protecting individual rights and parental rights. None of this should surprise anyone. Um, that bill, for instance, was never about making good public policy. They didn't bring it out. There was never a problem with conversion therapy in Connecticut. I don't know that it has ever existed or does to this day. The bill was about putting forward something designed to uh, do virtue signaling for the Democrats. Look, we're on your side, LGBTQ community, and if we can get any Republicans to vote against this bill because we made it too broad or inconsistent, even better, because then we can whack them around. And, and that's what you're witnessing today on that subject. Um, the only good to come out of that uh, situation is this opportunity. Uh, for me to take a few minutes to try and uh, inform and share what I know about how public policy is made in the state and about how um, we can't trust the campaign mailers uh, to be fair or accurate. Um, this is all dangerous stuff that is really dividing our country. Uh, it's making people believe that their neighbors or their elected officials are actually evil people that want to hurt others, which I don't think is the case uh, for Democrats or Republicans. And I think that the people that know better, that are perpetuating this stuff, uh, like on Southington Talks, the, uh, the members of the Southington Democrat Town Committee who are actively campaigning against me, who are spreading these rumors and lies, um, they're dividing our country and they're hurting um, our, our system. Uh, we need to be able to communicate and respect each other and understand 
uh, the actual content of these bills and what is good public policy for our neighbors and ourselves. Um, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed watching and stay tuned for my next video. Thanks.